The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Yes. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated. I'll invite any kids to come forward. If you want to come down? I have some work for you to do. Why don't you just stand? We can all stand together over here. What do you, have, have any of you heard bagpipes before? Frankly, I thought they were a little quiet. <laughs> so. Dad joke. Spawn on Okay, so this is, do you know what day this is? What, what is this? E- Easter Sunday. Great. And there's a word, a special word that we kind of start using again on Easter. Do you know what that word is? We've said it once. That's good. That's a good guess. That's the one I'm looking for. Alleluia. So we put it away for the season of Lent, and we get it back out. So what I'm going to have you do, ask you to do, is whenever that word is spoken, I want you to acknowledge that that word is said. And you can use three things. So you can use a pom-pom. Kind of fun. You can use a bell. Got bells. And the third option is little hand clappers. <laughs> this is my favorite. Uh, Party America didn't have all of one thing, so you get a variety. It's a buffet. It's Easter buffet. So if you want to grab one of these things in a very orderly ma- manner, obviously. Okay, okay. And if you have one, you can, you can return to your seat so we can clear out the area. And uh, again, whenever you hear that word said, wave your pom-pom if you got it, ring your bell, or clap your hands. I need hand clappers. Oh, we got some more that are coming down. I know. Can't pass up the hand clappers. Need some more pom poms. Who wants a pom pom? Okay, there you go. Oh, that came down. And again, if you have if you have one, you can return to your seats. You want a pom pom? There you go. You want one too? Okay, so remember, let's practice. And older children, sorry, I got pom pom stuck myself. You can you can participate too. Uh, one way to clap in sign language is to wave the hand. So you can let's try that. Older people, usually you're a little slower. No offense, but you just gotta come along. Now, kids, okay, kids, when you say hear the word, Alleluia. What do you do? You got your little clappers, pom-poms? Impressive. So let's try it again. Alleluia. Good job. We'll continue with the song. Peace and 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Alleluia. Very good. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us read portions of Psalm 18 responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. What is Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts down. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die of the good and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The scripture reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received and in which you stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, 
Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and it's the, his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. The gospel today is from Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they may go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who, who will roll away the stone for us? from the entrance to the tomb. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place you laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone. For they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. First, let me compliment you. This is fun. Hallelujah. That's right. Good job. Three days ago, I stood at a graveside beside a member of our congregation, Babe Miller. And many of you know her and her beloved ward. She was buried this last Thursday at Eden Cemetery, which is near Hudson. Uh, it's a time of deep sorrow, as most of you know, but also a time of sharing joys in life and prayers of death really does not have the final word. <clears throat> Standing beside that grave after the service, I was talking with some of her children, their children, these grown children, and they shared a story about her husband, Ward, their father, that on Easter, one of his traditions that he established for himself was that he would pick up the phone, telephone, and call family member after family member, and for like weeks, not just the day of, and say, Christ is risen, and expect the response, Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah. 
And they loved that. And I thought, what a, what a beautiful image we have today as, we, as they stood at the edge of the grave of this beloved one they buried and remembered that story of this mysterious faith that comes to us from Babe and Ward and all of these people who have gone before us that help us to remember these words, help us to remember to say Alleluia, help us to try to live it out in our ways. Just like those deeply faithful women who showed up at the graveside that day, that first Easter, with expectations that were changed quickly, as they expected to only see death, as they expected to only continue the, the grave chores, if you will, of caring for this body that was decomposing. But they were witnesses instead to something much different, something that we have come to believe a little more easily, that Jesus didn't stay dead. That we heard the story that the tomb was a gape. The temple curtain had been torn in two previously. The cross was bare. And those faithful women heard from this angelic, godly messenger dude, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, but he is not here. He has been raised. And they were filled with fear and amazement. They were seized, which means to be possessed by awe and wonder of this moment. But before we critique the last words or lack of words of these women, I want to share a little bit from a theologian, Gail O'Day, who reminds us that the silence of these women is not about failure or inadequacy. It's because it makes sense. <laughs> if you encounter God in the flesh in a strange thing in a grave, you should be taken aback. She says, because the women's silence, what it does is create space for the voice and presence of God to resound. She continues by asking, <clears throat> what adequate words can the women speak in those first few moments as they leave the tomb that would not just trivialize the moment? That would not make the empty tomb a story really just about what they had seen instead of what God had done. End quote. Their silence in the face of such a moment, it allows each of us, not just them, but it allows us to follow in the tradition with them to remember, which is a constant theme throughout all of the Bible. To pause, <laughs> to pause and recall the stories that they had experienced and the ones that we have read and heard about. As the messenger tells them and tells us, go and tell the disciples and Peter that the Christ is going ahead of you to Galilee and there you will see him. So what we do is we remember the stories, especially from Mark, this is Mark's version, of what Jesus had done. And I think that's what the women were flashing back to as well. How in chapter 1 of Mark, Jesus raised a woman out of a fever and fed her, giving her strength to serve. Chapter 2, Jesus restored a man with a who was paralyzed to movement and forgiveness. Again, in chapter 2, a man named Levi raises up to follow Jesus, leaving his tax-collecting days behind. Chapter 3, a man marginalized by a withered hand is raised to the center of his community. He is healed by Jesus. Chapter 4, Jesus stands and raises up, if you will, in a boat that's being swamped by that storm and calms the sea, stills the chaos. Chapter 5, a story of how Jesus awakened a young girl from a, a deadly slumber. Chapter 9, a boy threatened by a demon is raised by Jesus into freedom from torment. Chapter 10, a beggar blind rises up to have Jesus restore his vision and give vision in a new way to follow Jesus on the way. I think that's what the women are remembering. 
They're like, wow, maybe, maybe these things did happen. Jesus restored those individuals each along this way and also restored the communities, which is such an important theme in all of these stories, to bring someone back into a fold in which they had been excommunicated or exiled from, to re-enter life, to make life renewed, different, to allow all of us to do the same. Glimmers of resurrection along this path of Jesus that have fanned into a flame big enough that all of you have, for some reason, come here to not just hear bagpipes, although that's going to be a highlight, but to hear this story that gets ingrained to us, that empties the tombs that dwell inside of us, that grant a new day when we think it cannot be possible. There's a book called Tattoos on the Heart. It's one of our family's favorite by Greg Boyle. Greg Boyle is an Episcopal priest that has, was born and raised and has served in Los Angeles area and has served mainly with inner city demographics. If you haven't read Greg Boyle's stuff, you really should. He's written three or four books, just amazing stories. He shares a story about a interesting character that he met named Scrappy. Scrappy was a member of a gang in Los Angeles and was assigned, came into relationship with Greg Boyle through community service that was assigned to him and connected to the church that he served. But right from the get-go, Scrappy made it very evident they were not friends. They were not people that should be connected in any way that they liked each other. A few years after they had met, uh, a gang member in Scrappy's gang had been killed, been murdered. And during the funeral sermon, Father Greg gets up and says, if you love this person then you want, and you want to honor his memory, then you will work for peace and love your enemies. And Scrappy stands up, walks to the front of the space, looks him in the eye, the father in the eye, walks out, intimidating him trying to at least. A few years later, they have another encounter where Scrappy pulls a gun, draws it on Father Greg, leaves. But then a few years after that, this is a long time. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a bit longer for a tomb to crack open, and that's what happens in this, these people's lives. Scrappy walks into Father Greg's office and wants to talk, wants to open a bit. Bites him in, sits down. Scrappy says, I have spent the last 20 years building a reputation for myself, and now I regret that I even have one. And he wept, he wept, which is an occurrence of a tomb breaking open. After gathering his breath, he said, Now he asked, what, what do I do now? I don't know how to do things that are other than these things that I've done, these tough things. I don't know how to change my oil in my car. I, don't, I know how to drive, but I've never been taught how to park a car. I, I know how to wash clothes, but only in a sink of a cell. So Father Greg hired him in this organization that he created called Homeboy Industries, and it started as a bakery, a way to give these former gang members a trade of baking bread. So we hired him, and Father Greg says, what Scrappy discovered, as scripture has it, is that where he is standing is holy ground. God's voice was not one of restriction or retribution to shape up or ship out. Scrappy found himself at the center of the vastness and the right in the expansive heart of God, the sacred place toward which God had nudged Scrappy over all of those years to arrive at, to discover. Scrappy didn't knock on a door so that God would notice him. The door was gone. Scrappy was already inside. That's the heart of this gospel that the tomb was not rolled away 
by the gardener or the per people that work there. It wasn't rolled away by the women. It wasn't rolled away by someone else. God removes the stone, the stone from the tombs. God opens it. Like God did with Scrappy's heart. And sometimes it takes a bit. And we're in and out. But God keeps opening the tombs that are the things that bind us. And Jesus meets us. In those tombs, yes. But more so, like with Scrappy and Ward and Babe and all of us, God, like it says in this text this morning, God meets us in Galilee in our daily walks. Not just in those one spots, but in everywhere we go on our journeys. Loving you with a love that is powerful enough to bring someone back from the dead. On this Easter morning, we give thanks to, that we can gather like this on a day like this. We give a lot of thanks for those women who made space for God to work and speak and ultimately, because we got this story, had the courage to share with others the good news, to remind each other, to remember all the places that Jesus has been, all the things that Jesus has done, all the things yet to do to hear the message in this Easter day that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
gather our prayers together. I will pray each petition. After each spoken prayer petition, I will say the word, the words, God of grace. And the congregation is invited to join in singing, Lord, listen to your children praying. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. We pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise in roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope, God of grace. exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who serve to end violence and strife. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into, the, into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace. wisdom that we may serve and care for others. We pray for those in need this day, including Dan March, Mike Hoffman, Steve Monin, Arlene Markle, Alan Hammerstrom, Alan Kroger, Craig Bittner, David Richardson, Vicki Hoekstra, Judy Stearns, Rudy Yerke, Charles, Vanetta, Nick, Chris, Jared, Jordan and Lance, God of grace. <laughs> trust in your promises, that we live with joyful courage and compassion, God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ our resurrected and living Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Take some time to share God's peace.
We'll continue with this morning's offering.
Please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together by Jesus, let us pray the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. May be seated. All are welcome at the communion table here at Canton Lutheran. You're welcome to come and to receive. We serve at two stations. One is at the rail. You can kneel or stand. One is on the floor. Uh, you receive a piece of bread. Eat the piece of bread. There's cups of wine as the darker colored. Apple juice is the lighter colored cups. Uh, got some bells over here. Very distracted. It's my own kid. He has like seven of them now. Hallelujah, right? Good job. Again, you're welcome to come and to receive. Uh, follow the direction of the ushers as you feel led, but know that you're welcome at either of the stations, whichever you prefer to. If you would like gluten-free wafers, we have those. Just indicate that. Uh, if you would like a blessing, you're welcome to come and fold your arms in front of your chest to receive a blessing. But know that this is Christ's table, and all are welcome to come and to receive.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Thank you for being here. Happy Easter, everybody. Uh, thank you to those who were able to be part of the, the breakfast this morning as a fundraiser. We have a 20 youth heading to New Orleans this summer as part of the ELCA Youth Gathering. So there's a number of fundraisers that have been happening and still some to come. Thank you for your generosity to support our young people in that way. Uh, one thing we think, this is really random. We think one of you might have mis- put the wrong envelope in. If that sounds like you, talk to them later. It's the weirdest announcement I've ever said. I don't want to say more than that because, yep. Hey, happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> uh, thank you to everyone who is part of making this service possible. There's a lot of people that you see, but there's also a lot of people behind the scenes with Alter Guild, sound crew in the back, live streaming. Thank you to the musicians and singers and all the people who ran and did multiple things throughout the service. It takes a lot of people to make this happen, and it's a generous thing to do. So thank you to all those people. Let's give a little applause. We can do some of that. And it's been fun to hear the little clapping <laughs> at random times and my kids stealing all the bells. But you know, I'll invite you to rise as you're able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.